Hi guys, Nigel here with you, Nigel's Modelling Bench, but you knew that. Um, so here we are, part four of this beautiful Border Models 135th scale Stuka. Um, it really is lovely. So, what have I done since part three? In part three we got the cockpit all painted up and everything, and, um, and the cockpit sides and all that, so we got all that done. Um, I looked at using these brass photo etch seat belts. As I mentioned, I have messaged... HGW, they have come back to me. Apparently they have already made the 109 and 35th scale, the seat belts. They are waiting for a uh, sample kit to actually make the 35th scale seat belts for the Stuka. So um, I would have sent them mine, but I've already started it. So what I've done, I'm not going to use those brass belts. I don't like them. They're, they're far too skinny. It's just a waste of time putting them in. I'm not going to use them. And there are no belts for the, for the gunner either. So what I've done, this seat and this seat, I've glued in with white glue all right so I could easily just wiggle them out and break them out and then fit the seat belts if I have to um, I may actually leave the canopy loose as well so I can get in there and, and do that now the the belts you can see that one there is hardly glued down at all um, so when the belts come I'll be able to take the seats out and fit them and they'll look lovely I think it's it's such a lovely model the interior is so nice the cockpit and everything is so nice in there I think a nice set of belts is really going to make it pop um, you know, when I get this together and you see down in there, you'll see just how lovely it is. So I went on and actually tried the fuselage halves together with the um, direction finder in there. And have basically um, realised that it still goes together beautifully. So what I did, I glued it in one side, pegged it together and I've let the glue dry with it in that position. So I know it's in the right place. I don't want anything interfering with this joint along here. This is going to be the most important part of the model because we need to get this joint absolutely perfect. I'm probably going to glue it off camera so I can do it under my magnifier just so I can make sure it is absolutely spotless. Uh, the top we're going to get right afterwards and then we can always sand and blend that in. But I'm not going to do anything with the top until the bottom is done, set and all hard and everything and then I can pull the top about to suit. One thing I have noticed, there is a peg in this side and a hole in this side. If you leave it as it is from the kit it will not allow you to align the parts this way. Okay, when I, when I say this way, I mean like this. Okay, um, so what I've done, I don't know if the camera's gonna focus on it, I doubt it. I've cut half of that pin away. I've sliced it down that way. So I've removed half of the location pin and that gives me a little bit of wiggle room. I don't know if I can get in there and show you, but it gives me a bit of wiggle room so I can actually get in and misanaline those parts correctly to make sure they're flush across this face. Okay, so um, hopefully that's helped. Now I have actually looked and unfortunately once you get this back end glued together you can't get the cockpit to go in. This rear bulkhead gets in the way so we're going to have to fit the cockpit now unfortunately which is something I didn't want to do. I've also glued this screen in here. I found another couple of mistakes in the instructions which I will go through with you now. I've also found what I think is a mistake on the kit part, but I could be wrong. You guys can let me know. So this part that goes in here, this clear part that goes in here for the pilot to look down through when he's dive bombing, um, is G, it called up G7 in the instructions. It's not, it's actually G8. I smelt a bad egg when I got to here and it said G7 there, G7 there. G8 here with a question mark and G8 here with a question mark. So I've had a look, had a look at the actual parts and the actual part numbers in here is G8. Okay, so that's that part going in there, the clear part. And I've done my usual, I went round the outside edge with a magic marker, put it in place and then dab the extra thin into the corner, let it capillary around and that is glued in there solid. Okay, and as you can see, there are no glue marks or anything. It's lovely. And I will give that a quick clean with a cotton bud when I think of it just to get any pore marks off of there um, also the when we come to here you can see we've got clear parts of the, whichever one we do is they're both the same these they're both section six um, we've got a clear part going in here a clear part going in there on a Shaduka that I saw on YouTube at a museum walk around that panel there was metal now, whether that panel there was metal and the pilot pulled it up, 
I don't know. Or if on certain later versions it was put in as glazing. I don't know. It's something I need to find out. Maybe you guys can tell me in the comments. I also noticed here, I don't think I noticed this in the review I did, but that light is beautiful. It's a light lens. You paint it silver, there's a bulb in there and everything. It's lovely. Okay, so now we're going to move on to getting the fuselage halves together. And this is going to be a pretty major part of the build. As I say, I'll probably do a lot of the gluing under here off camera because I want to get under my magnifier. My magnifier is here. I've got this cheap old thing I'm using. And when the other one broke, I need to get a new one. I did actually email a company about getting one. I said I saw them at the uh, show. I just need to know which is the best and didn't even bother getting back to me. So I don't like people that don't come back to you when you make a sales inquiry. Um, if they're too busy and stuff, then fine. But when they actually throw away a sale because of it, it just seems crazy. Uh, so anyway, I digress. So we've got all this together. We're now going to get the fuselage halves together. Um, and then we're going to look at getting the rudder and everything in. And then we're on to the exciting bits. So let's get this done. So, the instructions out of the way. We don't need them. So the cockpit fits in like a dream. I think I showed you that before. Fits in absolutely beautifully. That just goes in there. That goes in there. You can see everything lines up. You can see like on the, the side walls there, you've got those vertical members. They line up perfectly with this one. Here's another one here behind the seat. You've got the radio all glued in and everything. The bulkheads fit in there beautifully. And um, yeah, it's really, really nice. So what I think I'll do is glue this into this half along with the direction finder. So I know I haven't known what that's that called that thing, but what I've done, I am um, just now while I was on uh, eBay, eBay, on Google, the eBay on the brain, um, I had a look at a cutaway drawing and found that it's actually called the direction finder. So but tell me, does that thing? Oh God, does that thing in there go round? Does that thing in there spin around? I know it has a clear cover over it, but um interested to know if you can let me know in the comments as I say I'm way ahead of you so there we go so that's glued in there and then what we can do is offer this up in fact I'm tempted because I'm worried about all this all pulling apart when it's together um, I, I, so I won't put any glue in there actually so, and you can see that direction finder fits in there just like every other part of this model it absolutely fits perfectly you can see that goes in when you close those fuselage halves up it leaves you with this little ledge around the edge to fit the clear part it's just 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 bloody gorgeous this model now what I'm tempted to do now is put some tape across here we use this Mr Hobby stuff because it's so bloody sticky probably rip the paint off when you take it off so we've got that front held together I'm gonna to hold it across the bottom as well I don't want that flapping around in the wind, that's not long enough, is it? Come here, tape. So, put that like that, put that like that, there we go. That's all held together now. Right, so, now I can concentrate on getting this together. What I'm going to do, as I said, I'm going to do this off camera. Um, I'm going to put a peg on there, just to hold it back together. What I'm going to do is go along like an inch at a time, or half an inch at a time, and look under the magnifier, and I'm going to get, you can see here, we have a joint running between two rows of rivets. I don't know if you can make that out. I don't think you can. But the maybe if I dim the light slightly, there are two rows of rivets there, one either side of the joint. And what we've got to do is try and get that seam as perfect as we can, so that we can go around with Mr. Surfacer and then take it off with alcohol afterwards, and not have to do any sanding. That's why I want to do it under the magnifier. I want to see just how good it is possible to get it. So I'm going to go offline now, do this off camera, and I'll see you when it's done. Right, that's the first part together. And all I've done is glued, as you can see where the glue is, I've just glued up to that first panel line. So I'm going to leave that now. I've used the extra thin, not the quick setting. I've used the ordinary extra thin, and that way it won't mar the surface. Made sure I've got plenty in there. Nice solid joint, nice and level. I'm leveling it up by using the back of the blade in between the rows of rivets. And then just looking at it and making sure, you know, that it's it's level like this. Because that's what we're after, it's a perfectly level joint. The fit of the seam, I mean, you can see the fit of the seam is absolutely gorgeous. There's no gaps along there or anything. But we need to make sure that everything's nice and level like this. I haven't used my tab method or anything because, you know, the sort of tolerance we're looking for here, 
you know, even like 0 0.1, 0 0.2 thickness difference in the plastic, the tab theft system would mess it up. So I'm hoping this is going to come out really nice because I really do not want to be trying to clean up in between those rivets. And the objective here is to try and get all these rivets left in place. Now I've had a look at a few references and I cannot see a seam line. It's like the BF109 and the FW119 that they have a seam line along here. I don't think the Stuka does. I can't see it there. It looks like that's a panel there and that's a panel there. So um, if I'm wrong, correct me. I'll have to scribe something in there. But um, it would be good news if there was actually a line there. But uh, anyway, if, if in fact, if there was a line there, going forward, for those of you that are building your kits, what I'd be tempted to do is come along with a sanding stick and just sand a chamfer onto that onto each part so that when you put them together, you get a slight gap. And then you can just run the glue in that gap job done nothing else to do so um anyway i think they've done that on the um on the fw190 from hph uh, sorry fw189 which i have to review uh, and now my voice is coming back i think i probably will review that in the next couple of days but by the time you see that this that'll probably be a couple of days ago so anyway let's uh let's leave it at that let that dry and then oh the tape over here is literally just to protect the cockpit this here is to stop me rubbing all the paint off the top of the seats or knocking the seats this here is protecting the gun mount this here is holding the cockpit fuselage together this one here is to stop me sticking my thumb in there or finger in there and snapping off the control stick the whole control column so uh there we go right let that dry and then i'll come back and do some more in a bit there we go i've glued all the way along now i did it in in four stages between the panel lines. Note as well how the panel lines line up as well. It's um, something a lot of manufacturers struggle with is getting their panel lines to line up perfectly. Um, who's the maker of that Su-22? Oh, it starts with a K. I can't think of the kit now, manufacturer now. But uh, Edward did a reboxing of it. And um, yeah, I remember, oh God, the, the panel lines on that thing, like <laughs> like this is terrible. But this is, uh, this is beautiful. I mean, look at that. Top joint. I just give that a little, little bit of a gap there, yeah. Slight finger pressure. Oof, gap gone. You know, it's um. I'm going to put Mr. Surfacer on here, and then remove it with a cotton bud, just to see if I can get a really nice flat finish. Maybe there's a slight bit of misalignment. And Mr. Surfacer will take care of it. But um, there's no way I want to go in there with a sander. So a bit of Mr. Surfacer, cotton bud. We'll see how that looks. Obviously up here, it's going to be all sanded and everything. But um, I'm going to leave this now for. What is it now? It is 22.22, 22, 10 past 10, 20 past 10. So just to give you an idea, um, time-wise and time frames and where we are, uh, the live stream, the premiere on part two is just finished. So that's where we are. I'm, I'm a bit ahead of you. So um, there we are. Um, leave that to dry now. Get some Mr. Servicer on there and then we will work on it tomorrow. Another bit of advice, you saw me before, I think it was in part two. I was holding parts and then blue capilla out of my finger. Another one to watch for, guys, if you are new to the hobby. When you've got pegs like this on things, if you look here, there's a panel line. You can see there's a panel line running along the back edge, about three millimetres in from the edge that goes over there. If you've got a peg on there like that and you run Mr. Servicer, uh, Mr. Servicer, Tamiya Extra Thin along that joint, Mr. That Tim Extra Thin will go down that panel line, capillary under the peg, and ruin all your detail. So before you glue it, you take the peg off, you put the glue on. Okay, make sure your fingers aren't in the panel line either. Okay, just give it a nip together, make sure it's all in the right place, make sure everything's flush. And then after just a few seconds, let the glue just go off. Then you can put your peg on without fear of ruining your, your surface detail. You have to remember this stuff, the, all these glues, they are extremely thin and they will capillary under anything. Um, that's why they work so well, is because they capillary into the gap. So anywhere, you know, if you've got your thing, if you've got your finger here, you hold it like that and you put glue on that joint, it's going to come out underneath your finger and ruin the surface. So um, and when you've got all this lovely river detail, you do not want to be doing that. So, right, that's that for this. So I'll see you in about 12 hours for me, for you. It's. Just thinking actually guys, it's you know it's it's 20 past 10 at night. It's um Bud Light o'clock. I do love Bud Light. I know a lot of you are gonna say, oh my god, that's not beer. It, it is, it's beautiful, it's lovely. Um so I'm just thinking rather than just go away and do nothing, may as well get this rudder together 
and see about getting these um, armour plates on the side. Oh no, we won't get them on yet because we haven't glued the uh, anything else up yet. But um, I think what we'll do is get look at getting this rudder together and um, see how that fits on the fuselage as well. So I'll get the parts off, get them cleaned up and then I will come back. Right, just cut these off the sprue and this is the sort of thing I want to show you. Now, either border models are listening very much to their... Um, you know, to the modelers that speak to them and the the, uh, the feedback they get, or they have actually got a modeler or two in their company because they're doing things like this. Like, if you look here, this is the sort of attention to detail I love when they're designing a kit. They've got the sprue attachment points actually on the surface, okay, rather than on the edge. So rather than have the sprue attachment points onto the edge here, you've got to cut them off and then sand a nice radius and everything. What they've done, they've put them on the surface so you can come along with your nippers. You can cut them off like this. OK, and then you can come over on the side, just come away from the from the face just a touch. And then come in with a hard sanding stick, nothing soft. And then you can sand away until you see the glossy plastic disappear around the sprue nib. And it's job done. No worrying about cleaning up around edges where there might be rivet detail or anything, or you've got you know a fancy radius or whatever. And we don't need to worry about cleaning up this actual edge here. You can see there's just just a witness of the sprue nib sticking out there. Don't need to worry about that because we can do that after it's glued together. You see on the bottom here, they've actually put it onto the edge where it doesn't really matter. But we can just sand that. There's no point in sanding away sprue nibs on the edge if you've got a seam you're going to be cleaning up because you may as well sand it then. So the other little thing I'm going to do here, which is one of my little old tricks I like to do, as you all know if you've seen one. Some of you are new to me and don't watch my old videos, but this is something I always like to do on trailing edges of things. You can use a pencil or a pen. Probably best to use a pencil just in case there's any left because the... Uh, the magic marker will come through all your primers and paints and basically without using any pressure I'm just going to sand this part and you can see straight away I'm sanding this part and because of the moulding because this has got thinner it's, it's gone away so you can see here as I'm sanding let me find something to point with you can see I'm sanding this edge here okay and you can see that the edge where the black, black magic marker is there's actually a clearing line here so what's actually happened, this part is not flat, this part is actually convex. So when you glue it together, let's get this one here cleaned up, what we might see is, um, let's just get these faces cleaned up, what we might see is the actual, there's a gap in the trailing edge, and that's always a loser. You are never ever going to win competitions or anything like that. I'm just cutting that sprue nib off because it's in that um, location tab because it's in the way. All right, You are never going to win any competitions if you've got thick trailing edges or gappy trailing edges or whatever. The, the fundamentals of aircraft modelling is to make sure you've got lovely trailing edges and stuff. And you can see again on this one, nice hard flat sanding stick, no pressure. Just gently going over it and you can see that it's sanding there and there, which means that face is, is convex. So if we put the parts together like that, sure enough you can see there is a gap on that trailing edge. The camera will focus on it, but there is definitely a gap there. So what we want to do is sand that so that it's nice and flat, because the last thing you want to be doing is pegging that to pull it all in because then you'll get all the glue oozing out everywhere and stuff. And um, yeah, you can peg it first of all. But all I'm going to do now is sand this with a flat stick until the all the pen disappears right up to the back edge, right up to the trailing edge. Now, a lot of people will put emery down on the table and do this. That's all well and good if the emery is actually glued down and dead flat. The trouble is if you don't glue it down, it will tend to curl up on the corners and you'll end up just reproducing the shape that you've got. Okay, so I'm just going to sand this with this flat stick, go in a straight motion or a circular motion, it doesn't really matter, and just gently letting the stick do the work, not pushing it in. And there you go. And you can see on there, we've now got a nice flat surface 
it's all level. Do the same on this one. Just sanding away, you can see it's removing plastic from here, it's not touching the trailing edge. Just keep sanding away until the ink disappears from the trailing edge. Just like so. Leave a stick off on my jeans. There we are. Almost there. As I say, no pressure. You don't really put pressure on because it defeats the object. If you put pressure on, you'll distort the part. If you sand the part in a distorted state, you might end up with a worse mess than you started with. So there we are. That's that done. Got a bit of ink just still showing there. There we are. And now when we put these together we should find we have a very thin training edge with no gap. We have still got a very slight gap there. So take these apart. The parts won't come apart, just drop them. You can see we've got pen along that edge. See the pen is still there, that's what's given us our gap. So I'll sand this now and I'm going to fast forward it or something, if I think of it. <laughs> right, so let's see how it looks now. There we go, the gap is all but gone. Okay, I don't know if you can see that, but you've got a nice thin trailing edge on there now. Which is what you want on a model of this sort of scale. You don't want greatly thick, chunky trailing edges. We'll do this on all the ailerons, flaps, trailing edges of the wings. Everywhere there's a trailing edge. Um, get it as thin as you possibly can. So there we are. So that's how we go about that. Now what I'm going to do now is just peg this together. And this is another problem, another thing that another thing, mistake that people make. They peg it together and you pinch it in there, and you will find that what it does, it pulls the trailing edge apart. So you need to make sure you're on the very front edge, okay, and not actually causing any issues. You've got location pegs there off to one side. And you've got the same in the fuselage. Look at that. Beautiful fit. So, uh, happy with that. Right, so let's get these glued together. There's a couple of ways you can do this. You can come along with your white top, tammy a white top, which is a thicker glue, and brush that, brush that into here, and let that do a bit of bonding. The only trouble is if you use too much, you'll end up with a gooey mess. So I'm just gonna put a little drop down there, just, just enough just to hold it together without having it oozing out everywhere. You don't want a big gooey mess. Oh, come on, right. Okay, so that'll be enough just to hold it together. And I know we've got some glue on the inside then, so we're not gonna have issues with cracking in the future. One of the big issues with stuff like this, you. You, you put a line of glue along that edge and it's all lovely. You come and look at it a couple of weeks, it's all cracked because there was no glue in there. So what you can do here is squeeze it in the middle and get one. There's not enough in there to get a gap. But um, we'll close up that white top. We'll come along with our extra thin. And brush this down here. Brush some along there. We want to make sure we get plenty in here because we want this joint to be nice and glued and solid. There we go. So that's our leading edge done. I'm just going to take that sprue nib off of there. So we can come along under here now and put some in. The capillary action will pull that up into that joint. If you notice, I pinch it and then I go like that. I don't keep my fingers on it. I 
pinching that, and then if any glue oozes out onto my fingers, then it won't stay there and capillary around. After a few seconds with Tammy Extra Thin, it's thick enough that you haven't got to worry about it. Okay, so we'll make sure that's all lined up. So what I'm going to do now is run some glue down this trailing edge. Use the old Phil Florey trick. Have it so that you're doing it away from yourself or having it going downwards so that any glue that runs over the edge won't destroy any detail. Okay, and then we can give that a little push together and again run off the edge don't hang around see I've got glue on my finger there look, and I've just left a glue mark there and it's so small it won't even notice under a coat of primer there we go now something I've done in the past is you can use these type of clamps these type of clamps here you have to be very careful what you do is you stick that clamp on there and you leave that to dry and then when you come back the next day you find that there was glue in there and the clamp is so strong and the plastic is so thin it's left a, a great big sink mark in it so be wary of doing that I'm supposed to be doing a border model Stuka build not a bloody how-to video I just can't help myself sorry guys and again as with part two and what should have been part one I think I'm going to put this out as a premiere. So what I think I'll do at the end of this one, because one of the things with premieres, you get in the chat and you all want to say goodbye, and the trouble is the video finishes and then the chat's gone. So I think what I'll do at the end of the video, I'll leave it for a couple of minutes without any talking or anything, just to give you guys a chance to say goodbye to each other. And don't forget, guys, if you're watching this on premiere, Please hit that like button, it helps the channel a lot, apparently. Again, you see, squeeze it, pull away, pinch your fingers, make sure there's no glue. You see, the floury idea here didn't work, it hasn't pulled enough glue in. That's probably not because it's a bad idea, it's because the bloody Tamiya glue brush doesn't hold enough glue. Which is a gripe I always have. Get some more glue in there. Let that go into its work and then... And now we'll have enough, that glue will be dry enough to not capillary under the fingers and should give us a very nice very thin trading edge and sure enough that's exactly what we've got a bit of a gap going on there I think just touching the brush and letting it capillary in careful not to put too much in you end up with a softening the edge so much it just loses its shape but as I say this plastic is just such a joy to work with you can see on here we've got the lighter plastic in the I think that's the sea sprue but this is everything else is this dark grey colour this grey this dark grey stuff is a joy to work with this is more like um more like Tamiya plastic I guess it's still lovely it's not as hard as HK it's not as hard as Hasegawa but it's it's harder than this. It's kind of like Kitty Hawk plastic, I guess. But I, I do I like working with Kitty Hawk plastic, but by far, this stuff, this this darker grey, border models plastic for me is, is my go-to. I just think it's lovely. Absolutely lovely. It works really well with Tammy Extra Thin. It sands beautifully. Um, you know, it's lovely to cut off the sprues. It's soft enough. It doesn't wreck your nippers, but it's hard enough to hold its shape. It's not like Airfix Blue Tack. It's lovely, lovely, lovely. Right, there we go. So that's our fin together. And uh, if you didn't know how to glue a fin together, or rudder, should I say, now you know. And you can see on there, 
we have a lovely sharp line, no gaps, no filler, no Mr. Surfacer, nothing. All that's going to take is a sand, just like everything else on this model. It's lovely. Right, here we are now, a good three or four hours later, or a good couple of hours later anyway. Um, and basically the bottom here is, is dry. I'm going to leave the tape on overnight, let that go really hard. I'm just thinking there's no, it's, it's not going to move now, so I may as well go on and do this, um, this upper side, and then everything's ready then for tomorrow for, for sanding. So we've got the... Um, the tail's not glued together yet at all, as you can see. It's glued down at the bottom, so I need to get that uh, all sorted. Um, so what we can do here is if we use my old trick with the cocktail stick, if we put a cocktail stick in the top of here, let's get the tip of it down there. Oops. And what we can do is hold it apart and it enables us to get glue into the joint. And the trouble is if you don't hold things apart, the glue doesn't tend to go right into the joint. So I'll just use my finger at the back there just to hold this apart and get some glue into this leading edge. And as you can see, I'm slowly letting it close together and then the glue will capillary through the joint. Um, I often do this with fuselage as well. If you kind of pin pinch them in the middle, quite often they'll open up. Now obviously under here, isn't as important because it's going to be hidden by the rudder. But we're going to go down the back. And you can see again here the fit is just phenomenally good. Everything's just going together beautifully. So that's that done. That's our fin uh, tail done. Okay, and we can give that a squeeze. You see I squeeze it in the middle and it opens up. And we can see in the middle there, there isn't as much glue as there was at the top. The last thing you want is dry joints because what will happen is sooner or later it will just crack open and you end up with a mess. So here we've got the upper fuselage which is holding itself apart nicely for me so I can get the glue into there. Now I do want to make sure I get glue all the way up into here. Make sure it's gone in. Plenty in there, just to make sure we get a nice, strong, solid joint that isn't going to crack or split or whatever going forward. You can see as I put the glue in there, I give it a squeeze and the glue oozes out. I'm not forgetting this little bit up here at the front. And there we go. So we're just going to give that a squeeze together. Let the wild action start to happen. And then, what I think I'll do is run some glue around there, I think. There we go. Just to get that glue together. Right, and then what we can do is just give it all a good squeeze, make sure it's all gone together. And then what I do is, with what little bit of fingernail I've got, I feel across. And what I can feel now is sort of pretty equal. Okay, what we can do again is the back of a blade, we can look to see that everything's level. Again, what I'm trying to do is make sure that everything's level and we're not going to have some great big steps to sand out. <clears throat> I'm going to put some more glue in that little bit there. Okay, and then we just make sure it's all together. Feeling across, if you've got a massive step one way, you'll feel it, you'll, you'll, your nail will slide off that way. And if it hits that way, that means this side is higher than that side. But uh, this kit being as good as it is, it's just gone together. So, yeah, you can see I've got a ridge of glue going that way and a ridge of glue going that way, so it's all good. So what we can do is grab some more tape. Just grab a couple of pieces of tape. And then give it a good squeeze, hold it together. Just like so, give it a good squeeze. There we go. 
I'll make sure that's all welded together. Again, just give it a feel. Make sure you haven't pulled anything out of line. I'm put a bit of tape over that, make sure that doesn't move around. I think that's going to be hidden by the uh, rear canopy anyway, that part. There we go. And then we can just put a peg on the top edge. Remember, don't put a peg in the middle like this, because otherwise it'll just spread everything open. So we'll put a peg on the top edge. That should hold all that together. Just make sure that back end's gone together. Just going to run some more cement down in there. There we go. And there we are, guys. I'm just going to make sure that leading edge is good. Just by running some. Just to peel. If there's any little gaps there or anything where it didn't go in. It'll find its way in now. And there we are, we have now got one glued together fuselage. The only bit I've got to do is up here. Now this is under cover, so it doesn't really matter if we don't get a good finish on it or if it's not perfect, but we'll get as level as we can. Let's hold that together. Put some cement in here. I know we won't because you might want to spread the bottom of the fuselage open, so we won't put anything in there. Again, just feeling, you can see I've got a bigger step going one than the other, so that feels good now, that feels nice and level. So we can get our tape, put our tape on, pull it across, and there we go. There we are, all done. So we can leave that now, because it's late at night, leave that overnight to... Uh, to dry and then in the morning we can deal with the seams so I'll see you then okay so we've got the um, Mr. Surfacer along the, along the edge there you can see there that's that's in there we've got that lovely river detail so what we're going to do now is rather than start sanding anything we're going to see if we can hide the seam without sanding so for this I use some Mr. Cutter Leveling Thinners if you don't follow my channel you won't have seen this but if you do I do this on practically every build I do. Um, so basically, if you've got if, if you, an area like this, you want to get it flat, you want to get rid of the seam, you sand it. In an area like this, where you have your raised detail, you don't want to be getting rid of and everything, use Mr. Cutter Lovely Thinners on a cotton bud. And all we're going to do is just roll that along there. Okay, and I'll just wet it and that will soften it. And what we can do, you can see as I rub over it, this has been on here about 10, 12 hours. As I rub over it, you can see it starts to come away. And what it will do, it will, I mean, Mr. Cutter Level Thinners will eat into the plastic if you leave it on there for a long, long time in a lot of depth. You know, if you sort of put a piece of plastic in a, a cup full of Mr. Cutter Level Thinners, it will attack the plastic. But doing it like this doesn't hurt at all. I have seen people do this with cellulose thinners. I would advise it because cellulose thinners and plastic don't get on very well. And basically, this will hopefully enable us to pretty much hide that seam and that cotton bud now has had it so I need to get a new new end and you will find with these paper cotton buds they do go all floppy quite quickly whereas the old plastic ones used to last a long time but obviously we need to uh, be aware of the environment so and you can see these Aldi things are absolute crap or little are they just fall to bits so, only get the Johnston Johnson ones. These here, this is what he's with. They get these Johnson's baby cotton buds. They're brilliant. They don't fall to bits. Um, any of the cheap ones just fall apart. Don't bother with them. So, as you can see, we can rub that. I go across so that I get the... Because obviously as I rub along, it's leaving Mr. Surfacer in between the rivets. So I just want to get it that way, get it out. Okay. And any divots or any steps or anything, you see we're leaving loads of fluff on here because of these crap cotton buds. Any steps or anything that are there, what will happen is the Mr. Service will hopefully, so where you had a, a step, hopefully Mr. Service will just kind of smooth it out. So you may see a line, but it won't be like a definite seam. 
because we really want to try and avoid having to do any cleanup with our, around those rivets. And this is all in preparation for the, the Lancaster, which as we know is covered in raised rivets. So there we go. Now I'm looking in the light and I can see a seam down the middle. But I'm wondering if I'm going to get a coat of primer on there, if it'll actually show up at all. There we go. So the truth will be when we get a cut of primer on there, we will see how it looks. And I will probably do that once we get the wing on because we're going to have the same problem once again here. We've got that central wing section with all the lovely razor rivets. We're going to have a problem with that going in there. So at the end of the day, when you look at it, there's not really too much you can see there. So I'm not going to worry about it too much. Um, the top, take a hard sanding stick, not a soft one, something hard. This is 400 grit. Let the sander do the work, don't go pushing it in. And if you've got your parts nice and level when you glued them together, then this should be a doddle. There you go. That's that seam there sanded out. Now, when we come to the fin, we'll be careful not to put a flat spot on the front. We just sand that out, and that will be it. Job done. So I'll be back in a minute when I've got that sanded out, and we'll go from there. So, there we go. All sanded down. Quick cut of Mr. Servicer 1200 on there. And um, as you can see, or you can't see because of the exposure or whatever, but there is... Let's turn the light down a bit, let's see if we make it a bit better for you. There is a very faint seam between the rivets. Worst bit of it is here, between these two panel lines, where the, the glue has oozed out. I don't know if you can catch that in the light. It's very difficult to see. But um, I'm kind of tempted to leave it. Leave it, keep the washes away from it. It shouldn't show up. Um, the thing is, you have to sort of make a decision. I, I could make more mess of the rivets by doing this than I could by sanding that joint. I mean, I've got some archer rivets, but I'm not sure the spacing, the size or anything is going to be the same. So, I mean, I'm just going to leave it and see how it looks under a coat of paint. But, um, I mean, I may just get in between the rivets and just scrape it a touch. But um, I've also got a fiberglass pencil I could try using, which will... Uh, fiberglass pencil is here. Where is it? Here it is. Basically, you can use this. Um, I'll do it on here. You can just basically, you can clean up plastic, but it won't actually remove any detail. And the, the more fiberglass you have exposed, the softer it becomes. Okay. So I'll be able to just go across there when the paint's dry and maybe soften it up a bit. We shall see. But I've done a um, a guide coat across here. I've done the, some Mr. Service across there. Done some underneath here. And as we can see, we're all seamless. Nothing going on there at all. So that's all good. Um, this area here looks all good. Then you put some primer on it. And I don't know you're going to make it out. I, mean, I need a magnifier to see it. But just, just behind that panel line. And just in front of that panel line is a small divot. So we're going to sand that out. Because also I can see... If I can catch it in the light, it's a shadow. No, nope. it's too clean to show it, but there's a, there's a very slight sort of ridge in the middle rather than being flat. So that's that's an advantage because it gives us them the sand. So basically, once again, I, I did put Mr. Surfacer on there, but I didn't need it. I'm not going to sand it yet because the paint's still a little soft. But um, again, you know, no filler, no filler whatsoever. The only place we've put filler on this model is in these ejector pin marks inside that cowling. That's the only place there is any filler anywhere on this model. Oh, the other place is where I took the um, the uh, control stick out of the floor and I've just put some filler in that hole. So that's that. I mean, really, nothing to worry about. Um, whoops. So, uh, right, let's get on and see what else we can do while that's drying. Right, so, I've um, got the instructions out. You can see we've done all this now. We've got the rudder together, as you can see. I've also done a guide coat down the back of there to make sure that training edge is all lovely. And it is. Get this light back up right again. There we go. 
training edge on there is all lovely, so that's all good. Um, now, I said I put the rudder on and put these little actuators on the side. I don't want to fit the rudder without the actuators because I want them to fit perfectly because they're going to go into these little areas here. And I don't want to fit them yet for fear of breaking them off. Um, so what I'm going to do is leave the rudder off until near the end of the uh, build where the wings and everything are on. Um, now we're going over the page here where we've got the two section sixes. And from what I can gather, this one is G1 and this one is G2, purely because we've got the longer wing tips. Um, and also the pictures I've seen of a G2 don't have this piece here. Whatever that is, if someone could tell me, I don't know what it is, that there, is it a light? Is it what, what is it? I don't know what it is, but um, the G2s don't appear to have it. So I'm assuming, which makes an ass of you of me, that this is G2 and that is G1. So that's what we need to be getting on with. Going over the page, you've got the tail planes and the elevators. I also want to be getting on with them. So I think what we'll do is do these radiators and that'll give, give us the, uh, the end of part four. Yeah, part four this is. Um, and then I think in part five... We'll get on with the tail planes and the wings and, and go from there. So um, we need to get these parts off and get some super glue out and get them all glued together. Right, so we've got our photo etched grills here. These are the water radiators. And we've got our under wing boxes here, the actual main part of the radiator. I've written on here 25 and 24. I'm sure they're identical, um, but just in case. Um, on here you've got PEO5, PEO4. I'm not going to bother making a note of it, but basically... 05 is handed to the right. You can see it's got a like a, an angled end on one end. So these are the 05s and these are the 04s. So obviously that's a 5, that's a 4, that's a 5, that's a 4. So that's wrong there, but I'm not going to worry about that. So we'll um, get these started glued together. Now I have just done a test fit and they fit in there absolutely fine. So I've sanded them down the back. I've, I've coarsed the, they're coarsened, roughened the back up. I've got a frog in my throat which is going to make me cough in a minute so I'm going to have to turn the camera off so basically plenty of glue in there we don't want them falling out they were slightly bowed I have just given them a bit of a spring back okay so we can glue that in there like that and there we go that's that one in there and then the other side will be an 04 so we can just go around there with some glue Just like so. And plonk that one in there. Like that, make sure it sits in the recess. A little bit of glue on my fingers, not going to worry about that. That's what the fiberglass pencil comes in for. Really good for cleaning up photo etch. You can just brush it on, any glue you've got on there, anything will come off. Good for removing the solder as well. So well, I get these from, you can get them from Ammo Mig if you want to pay a load of money for them. But RS is a um, like a, a industrial supplier, five one four eight six eight, and the brush is on the end of the same number. You can get the wire brush and the glass fiber brush. I have both; they are absolutely brilliant. So we'll just glue this one up as well. So how are you all doing? I hope you're all well. Hope everybody's happy, and I hope a lot of you have decided to buy this kit because. Up to now, I hope I don't eat my words, I really do, because it's so lovely. I just hope we don't have something stupid like the bloody belly is one millimetre long and it should be, something like that. But I, the way the rest of this kit is going together, I'm sure it's going to be absolutely fine. Um, I really am. I don't think it's a kit for a beginner. It's quite uh, complex, a few technical bits, as you've seen. But... Um, I think if you've got sort of four or five kits under your belt. I don't know. I need to ask Border Model actually. What's their next going to be? Next one going to be? Everybody's saying they want to see a 190. Um, I certainly would love to see an FW 190 from them. Uh, especially a D9. Or even a TA 152 would be good, wouldn't it? But um, that's the beauty of that, that model. If you make a 190... Um, you can keep adding sprues and the sky's your limit. <laughs> My dragon did. Um, so there we go. So that's our two radiators there. And they're going to slot into the wings, I believe. So let's just get the... How are you gonna, if they're going to slot into the wing. Let's get the wings out. Let's have a look. See how they fit. 
So here's our lower wing. Oh, it's the belly. It's not the wing, it's the belly. Okay, so let's have a look at my belly. Come out. Right. So these are going to slot in there. So our instructions are telling us. Okay, I'm assuming they're going to stay the same. There's no number on here. Got E24, E25 here. And it just goes over to here. So I'm assuming they stay the same. So 24 is this one. is going to go into this side with the angled face sticking out. But there's no... Okay, it sits in a well. So there's a well down in the bottom there. It just sits in there. And then these covers, which are on the other sprue, are going to go over the top. So... That's pretty cool. So what I'm tempted to do is spray all in there with the light blue first. Spray the inside of the covers. Uh, spray these up, get some washing and everything, put them in. And then stuff some tissue down in there to cover up the radiators. Or just paint it all as it would have been done in real life. Just let it overspray. But um, we'll do a nice job. So uh, there we go. So what have we got here? We've got 13 minutes to run. So I'll, we'll do a bit more. Um... Right, got some bits off the sprue. These are the actual cowlings for the radiators and you can see in the bottom of them they've got some little tabs on either side that the radiators will fit into. But you need to make sure, don't go gluing these in, you need to make sure you've got the right one in the right side because obviously if you get it wrong uh, it's not going to fit. So that's okay. If I try and put this one in that side, as you can see it won't go. So we need to make sure we get those correct. Okay, um, also I'm going to paint those separately anyway, so we're going to paint the inside of these blue, paint the inside of this area blue, paint the radiator silver, and then we can get it all together, and then we can stuff some tissue paper or some foam in there when we spray the underside. Um, I've got this centre section off basically to just try that out. So, moment of truth, I've still got some sprue nibs on there actually I need to get rid of, and they've also done here, thankfully, thank you border model, they've done the... Um, the sprue nib on the surface there so we'll leave that obvious rather than half sand it now is this going to fit the fuselage okay so that's looking good so far look at this look at that you can see at the front the width is nigh on perfect all right it's going to have to come out about like a quarter of a mil if that in fact, when you put the bulkhead in, it's going to line everything up, isn't it? Um, and then, if the bulkhead fits nicely, which I'm sure it will, that, yeah, fits absolutely gorgeous. In fact, if I take this piece of tape off of here, because that is glued under there now, let's just see. Let's just see how this goes. So what we can do is use that bit of tape to take the back in place just to hold it. And then that will it's just fallen in place. I didn't even have to try. That's just fallen into place. Whoops! How to break your engine in one foul swoop. But, uh, yeah, look at that. Straight in. Gorgeous. Unbelievable, isn't it? Unbelievable. Right, so somebody asked in my um, my premiere, the live stream, whatever you want to call it, in part two. Is it as good as Tamiya? Yes. Somebody else asked, out of 10, how many points would I give it? And I replied, 12. Is that good? Um, I mean, this area back here, yeah, it looks like... It looks like it's slightly shallow. I mean... I may just pack it out with a bit of 5 thou card or something under there. In here, I may just pack it up just to get it level. But, I mean, it's... Well, I'm not sure that I'm correct. It's, it may be okay. We'll have a look when we come to fit the wings. But um, I'm pretty sure that's going to be really good. But the fit is just incredible. So, that's that. So, we've got to look again. These radiators in. Um... As, as I said before that I've got to paint everything but uh, yeah waffled enough there so I think we'll call that a day for this video there's nine minutes left to run and as I said 
because we're doing this in premieres, then there's a chat going on. Um, if you're watching this after it's premiered, you won't see the chat down the side. If you're watching the premiere, there's chat down the side. One of the problems with Trek premieres, it just shuts at the end like that, and nobody gets a chance to say their last few words in the pre in the chat or whatever, or say goodbye. So um, what I'll do is I'll cut this off now, and then um, just put some music on or something, and uh, say goodbye. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you all soon. Bye for now.